what I want to talk about today, but in particular, some of those aspects of the Marshall uh, idea that why is there a ward off left and a ward off right? Is it simply because you use your left arm here and your right arm there? Yes, but there's they're, they're different things. The ward offs, the actual attacking arms, are exactly the same. In other words, what the strike is is the same in ward off left and ward off right. So what makes it different? What's different is the action of the other hand, uh, the hand that's not striking. In ward off left, it separates like this. In ward off right, it has this kind of carry the ball look to it like this. In both cases, the action of the striking arm is the same, but in one case, it separates, and in the other case, it doesn't. So if we did <laughs> word off left, word off right to the left, it would look like this. Okay? If we were word off left to the right, it would look like that. So in other words, the, the distinguishing thing is the action of this hand. Now, what function does that perform? Why is that important? Now, uh, this is the uh, correct ward off left. Notice I'm controlling the wrist and striking here. But the danger here is being elbowed. And this elbow could come really fast, in fact, before this even happens. As soon as let's do it again. And she can get me a little sooner on the elbow. And here, I'll step right into it before I even have a chance to warm up for this. Do one more time. Yes, don't waste a lot. <laughs> you don't have to wait for me like that. There, I'm walking right into it. So, uh, how do I control that? Well, obviously, I control the wrist, which means if she, you know, still tries to do it, I can control her even further. <clears throat> so, I'm using the wrist to keep myself from being injured with the elbow. So that's why this looks like this. Okay. Now. What is the transition from ward off left to ward off right? Okay. Here, I control the wrist, and she wards off this action that gives her a step. You know, make, make, make the world. So you change and make you step. Yeah, you can hollow out a little bit more there, even. Just really get away from it. There we go. Now, she immediately answers with a punch, a reverse punch. Notice the first punch was a forward punch. Notice here, my hand is right on her elbow. This gives me my proper step, and this gives me the strike here. But the important thing is, notice, why did I take the elbow in one case and the wrist in the other case? Well, when they do the first attack, here's our interception point. I'm not going to try to go for her elbow. There's the wrist. It's easy to control here. Now here, when she strikes, trying to control the wrist would be a you know foolhardy thing to do. Just let it go past because that's the danger. The danger is the elbow. I can control it either by holding the wrist or by simply palming the elbow. Notice I'm not grabbing the elbow. That would, that would be a mistake for other reasons. But all I have to do is just gently hold on to it. And even here, I'm not really trying to resist it. When I feel any inclination to elbow, go ahead, this gives me my proper step. <clears throat> so I'm just listening with it. Let's show it again. Here. So, <clears throat> this is the nuance of ward off left and ward off right. What it is showing is your control of the attempt to elbow. Now, what this leads to, uh, let me just make a point here. Go ahead. Here. Notice, how do I control this wrist and keep it from elbowing me? I certainly don't control it by pulling on it, because that would just pull the elbow into me even more. No, I control it by making it go in a sort of arc out this way as I'm stepping in for this. So this action, in other words, does not have this component to it. Okay? It is like this. Now, you frequently see people in Chinatown, perhaps, who are very acquainted with the martial meaning. When they do this move, they make it look much more like this. You can really see this sort of emphasis of pulling out this way. This means they have an understanding of that function. Again, so here. So because I'm pulling this way, this leads 
to the actual answer, the traditional answer to this move. Let me flip your part now. Right here. Mm -hmm. Now she's pulling it out this way. I follow this, reverse it, and do cloudy hands. Okay? <clears throat> and this time, don't defend it. Okay? Because you can't see how the defense works. Let's have a little more forward. Okay? So here. <clears throat> so this reverses like this, step, and then she steps. I can slap here. But her action is to remove it as soon as it crosses the center line and block here. So this ends in this sort of traditional position. Let's do it from another angle. Let's do it from this angle, okay? So you start here, but don't step back too far here. Okay. okay. All right. So in other words, what leads to the traditional cloudy hands answer to war up left is this defense against the elbow. Uh, without it, the attempt to do that move would seem extremely clumsy. In other words, <clears throat> now, if I do not defend against the elbow, and she also does not administer the elbow, but simply tries to reverse this grip, it's completely weak. The reason she can reverse it is because she follows this pole and reverses it here. Right. And then we have this. <clears throat> so, in many cases, this is a good example, in many cases, you have the traditional defense against a certain technique. And in trying to apply that defense, you find it extremely difficult to do. And you're wondering, why is this a defense? How strong do I have to be to just be over here and be able to muscle this person around? <clears throat> but no, it's, it feeds off of her defense against something else. So in other words, if your partner is not aware of any need to make this little pull outward, um, you'll, you'll never be able to make cloudy hands work in this case. And also, there's another problem, which perhaps is worth examining. Uh, let's do it this way. Okay. So here, here. Now, if I try to cut, this, this naturally makes a circle like this, okay? If I try to cut across the circle, say to make it straighter, it's easy for her to hold me and control me. It is dependent on this action, because this, if she tries to control and hold it back, it can uproot her this way. In other words, when I do this with proper adherence, this is making air ball here, so I can uproot her with this whole action, which is why she has to give in to this. She can defend it, but she can't resist it. So I never try to violate the, the idea that your adherence means you feel like you're sort of crawling around like a, on the edge of a bunch of soap bubbles or something. Don't try to penetrate them. Don't try to cut across them. Don't try to do anything except follow them, and you'll discover the penetration happens naturally. You have to wait for it. So that's why adherence uh, is this is really an act of patience in a lot of ways. Because you say you have to say, I'm not thinking about the result of the technique. I'm simply thinking about following this feeling of contact. Okay. Thank you.